opportunities, personal data management systems in our schools, or our desktop computers for coding. <laughs> I dug that one out of my basement. <laughs> but nonetheless, we do need something that we can afford, something that's low enough cost, because it's really easy to bring in an outside consultant uh, or a contractor to develop a platform for you based on WordPress or based on something else, and you can easily hit thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000, which may be out of the reach of many, many school districts. Uh, we want something that's ad-free so that it's a safe tool for our students to be able to access. We want something that can be deployed mostly by in-house uh, IT as well as ET, educational technology staff. Again, something where we don't necessarily have to rely exclusively on an outside contractor. And when it comes to WordPress multi-site, you're looking at kind of three core components you have to have for a successful super admin within WordPress. Somebody who has a background not only in web design and development, but also somebody with a strong background in information technology to manage the installation, as well as somebody with a background in educational technology to look at what features are going to be helpful, how can we help teachers, how can we provide the training that teachers are going to need in order to be able to successfully implement this without screaming. We need something that can be used by novice teachers with a minimum of training at the same time because we know in reality there's never enough time to put in all the training you want to do. We need something where teachers can hit the ground running and begin developing their materials. And also something that is the flexibility to meet future needs that we may not even know about yet. So let's see whether WordPress is going to fit the bill for this one. We know that we can unify teacher websites within it because we have the multi-site installation. We'll take a look at that. Obviously, if you set a theme, you can mandate some consistent design elements. You can set up minimum required features. Not so sure about meeting different teachers' needs. We're going to have to look at that one when it comes to social media and forms and file hosting. I saw a head shake over there. And we'll have to look and see whether that's going to be a good option for us. You certainly can do it at a low cost, but we'll see how viable that is. Can it be deployed by mostly in-house staff? We'll have to see about that. We'll definitely have to see how teachers can handle that. But we know that WordPress is ever-evolving. There's another presentation going on right now about the newest version of WordPress. So it definitely has some flexibility. It's always being improved. So we have three questions that we're going to have to come back and answer. So. Since we're in Boston, I have to say, where to begin? <laughs> we have to make some firm decisions about default options. When you're going to set up a multi-site installation, what are your standards going to be in terms of comments and user responses, user permissions for the site? What are you going to start off with? And then you can always rule by exception. If you have one teacher that wants to have comments, but you've decided you want to turn off comments for the majority of your sites, you can always go through and grant those permissions. But you have to begin by making those firm decisions ahead of time. You need to secure proper hosting and backup services from a managed hosting service. This is where I do recommend that districts spend the money and secure a professional. You don't want to necessarily hire, uh, host it on your own server or take care of your own backups. Take advantage of the opportunity of outside uh, off-site backups as well as a service that's going to help you in the event that your site is compromised. Create your multi-site installation. If you've never done multi-site and you're here because you want to learn how to do it, all that I did the very first time I did it was go, look at the codex, there's step-by-step -step directions. It's really, really simple. It tells you how to edit the PHP pages, take this, paste it in here, really straightforward. And then there's a great plugin called User Role Editor that you can use to establish custom role types so that you can make sure that people have the ability to do what they want to do, even if that's not quite covered in the existing roles of author or contributor or editor or administrator. You have to find what's going to be your norm for granting permissions. And that's a big question. Do you start off saying, I'm going to grant people permission to do everything under the sun so that they can spread their wings as wide as they want to? Or are you going to say, we're going to start off giving teachers, for example, editor options so that they have a lot of basic controls, but not to give too much because until people have more skill, you don't want to necessarily get people into the situation where they've broken their own sites. So that's a decision you have to make philosophically. My personal opinion is, 
start off giving people kind of an intermediate amount of control, maybe at the author or editor levels. I wouldn't jump to making people administrators of their own pages unless you have a reason to, but we'll come back to that in a moment. Select and configure your theme and your settings. And this is definitely where I encourage you to bring in a professional. I said to you before how you have to have those three different skill sets in order to be a successful WordPress uh, super admin. My experience primarily is in educational technology. That's what my background is. And my experience when it comes to web development is pretty much from just using WordPress as somebody having my own website and making a few others. I am not a designer. And as you'll see when I show you uh, the demo sites that I have, they're not beautiful. The headers are not beautiful. That's where you really do want to spend the time to bring in somebody who can make your site looking impressive. And that's not necessarily an enormous fiscal commitment on the part of your uh, district's budget. You want to install and test your plugins to make sure that they are compatible with multi-site as well as with the theme that you've set, uh, selected. And then you're getting ready to start setting up your sites. And what I recommend that everyone does is that you start by creating a template site so that, so that you can see how the sites are generally going to look when you populate them with information. And if you're going to have, for example, a requirement that teachers have a page with their contact information or page with their schedule, go ahead and put those pages into the template site so that all teachers need to do is replace the text instead of adding new pages or creating new widgets. Set those up to begin with. You have to decide, are you going to have one universal template or maybe create child templates, which is what I did. I started off with a universal template and then I made one for each of our different schools with a graphic from the building as part of the header. So definitely I'd encourage you to consider that ahead of time. And then you're getting ready to start registering users. For my demo site, I think I have about a dozen or so users. So that was really easy for me just to plug them in and set them up for this. But if you're in a school district with 250, 500, 1,000 different users that you're going to need to add, you may want to have uh, other options, maybe involving, again, an outside contractor to allow you to mass enroll these users and get them set up. That need becomes even greater if you're also going to want to have student accounts for student bloggings or students to participate in the forums. The blog copier is a great plugin for you to use for this. It does exactly what it looks like it does, what it sounds like it does. You can take one installation that you have in WordPress and duplicate it. It's as simple as that, and it works as well as it sounds. Great, uh, great plugin. And then you set up your teacher accounts, and that's something that I initially forgot to do. I made these teacher accounts, and then I'm thinking, well, why can't I do it? And what I remembered is I may have made the account, I may have made the uh, child site, but you have to link it so that that account has the administrator or the editor privileges in that installation. That was a really important piece. So, uh, user management is an important piece here. We talked about uh, starting off with a predefined set of permissions, and then you can add those permissions as necessary. So I found using user role editor that uh, one of the things that I did a lot of was uh, tweaking who had the opportunity to add users and modify users, especially if you're going to set up accounts for teachers and give them the opportunity to add student accounts, they're gonna to need to have those permissions. User Role Editor will allow you either to do this on a case-by-case -case basis, meaning Mr. Smith, we're gonna give him these controls and Mrs. Jones is gonna have those controls, or you can set up a new role within WordPress instead of being limited to contributor and author and editor and administrator, you can set up an additional custom role that will appear in the dropdown with all the others. There's a free version of User Role Editor that will let you do that on a standard installation or there's a premium version that will let you do that on a multi-site installation so that you do it once under the super admin controls and that populates out to all of your child sites. Also, I gave people the option to edit theme uh, options. That was a, a tough one for me because uh, I found that in order to give people the capability to modify their widgets as well as to modify the top menu, they had to have this, even though I did not want them to be able to change the theme itself, because we wanted that consist, uh, consistent design scheme. Promote users as necessary. If a teacher comes to you and they say, hey, I'm set up with these editor controls, and I bet most teachers aren't going to even know what credentials they have on it, what permissions they have. But if a teacher says, hey, I really want to do this, I really want to try this uh, function out, be willing to promote users, because as super admin, you can always get in if you have to change something or fix something. 
but I always encourage you to give teachers more options than fewer options. And then demote users as necessary, if you find they're accidentally clicking around too much and making things not work as well, or if they're saying, I'm seeing too much stuff, I have too many controls, I want something simple and basic, then you certainly have the opportunity to demote users. But most importantly, train, train, train. You need to provide organized but differentiated training. The one-size-fits-all approach certainly isn't going to work. You're going to have teachers who are going to want to go very quickly, teachers who are going to want something a little more basic, and that way you can avoid that, because we've all seen that happen in some sense. Additionally, you want to give users the control and permission to make their site what's right for them and what's right for their class. And as educational technologists, it's our job to really facilitate that. If a teacher would come to me and say, hey John, I want my WordPress site to have this happen or to be able to embed this, it's not, sorry, we're not supporting this. I think it's our job to say, let me look and see how I can make that work. We really need to be uh, folks who are problem solving and not just saying no, just because we don't have that ability right now. So let's take a look at a, a sample network of sites here. You're welcome if you have a uh, mobile device and you want to head over here, advantage.com slash msdemo. I'll leave this up for a second in case you're going to head over, but I'll also head over on here. And I'll just take you through some of the uh, different installations that I already have. So when you go to advantage.com slash msdemo, you'll see this landing page here, and it's going to give you a directory linking to the five different sites that I'm going to share with you today. I already have them loaded up. Like I said, they're not always pretty. This is a proof of concept to show that it can support the functions that you would need in order to accommodate a variety of different teachers' uh, preferences. So here's a really basic site that I set up here. We've got the school in the background here. And I found a lot of teachers just like to have this you know, friendly welcoming page. Again, this is based on the elementary level or a uh, really straightforward welcome page where you've got class information, you've got about me, policies and grading, class schedule, a link where they can learn how to contact you, links to uh, learn more about the class, or it can come back here to the welcome page. A really straightforward site. There's not a whole lot that's changing. I did give this account uh, the uh, credentials to edit, op uh, to edit options so that they could change the front page of their site from being a blog to being a static page. But then we also have Mrs. Raymond's site. Now here's a more elaborate site. You'll notice this user added in a uh, sidebar here. They put in a variety of different widgets, post archives. They've got a blog as their main page. This is how I tend to do my class website. And again, you've got some consistent pieces here. These are all set up in the template. You've got the About Me, Policies and Grading, Schedule, Links. But this page also has a calendar embedded here. So that way people can see main events going on here in the classroom. So that's something your teachers can also very easily put in, especially if your building is uh, using uh, Google Apps. Here's an example of a team website here, where you have a bunch of teachers that are sharing one single website, and they're all posting, they're all having login access. Again. It's about giving people the opportunity to do what they're interested in doing. If you have a bunch of teachers who say, we want to add in a child site here for the whole team to share, that's certainly something we easily can do, and each teacher can go in and post whatever they happen to need to put in. And then right over here, you have a website with some embedded uh, social media. Let's imagine this is a website where the teacher has an ongoing Twitter feed that's worked out for a couple of years. You can set up so that they don't have a blog set up on their site. They're just embedding in their live Twitter feed, as well as, again, some of the consistent pages right over here. And lastly, here's an example of a middle school website where you have a teacher who's posting their class information, and then you have a variety of different options here on the top. Again, you have those same consistent pages, but you have teacher updates, a student blog, and a homework link. And all that these are are categories uh, from the blog set up on the top menu bar for uh, users to access. So that if you have students who are logging in and they're posting blog updates, uh, visitors can access those. I also set up here a BB Press forum 
it for teachers who would want to have online discussion groups. I've done online discussion groups with my students for three years now. Uh, and every year I started off doing number, uh, number of the Stars, which if you're familiar with that book, that's a touchy one to do with students. It's about the Holocaust. And yet that's where I started doing the online discussion groups. And I've found year after year that it is the most impressive activities that my students do because they take it seriously and they have these really rich conversations. So from my own perspective, that was a non-negotiable. I wanted to make sure that a site had the, uh, or platform had the flexibility to be one of the really basic sites. I wanted to make sure that a platform had the ability to do one of the more basic sites like this, where it's just a bunch of static pages going all the way over to a more elaborate site with discussion forms to allow different people to have the access to uh, have that level of student interaction as well as student blogging. So let's take a look at some of the challenges now that uh, we've faced here. So I found fine-tuning user permissions has been a challenge, getting that right. When I made these sample websites, I found what was particularly effective for me in kind of ironing out some of those quirks was creating them under the user account. So I wasn't just logged in as super admin making these pages. Instead, I created the page using the uh, uh, site copier. I created the user account. I set up the user account with whatever credentials I wanted it to have. And then I said, okay, let's try making it. And as soon as I hit a wall and I said, here I am as an editor. Wait, I can't make this change. I'm unable to post this. Or that HTML isn't coming through. I'd say, okay, here's where I have to promote this user. And that helped me learn through hands-on experience, depending on what the teacher would want to do, here's what permissions that user is going to need to have. Here's what capabilities have to be attributed to that user. And that's one big piece of advice I'd give you is if you're rolling out a multi-site process, try it out for yourself in those actual permissions that you can see through your own experiences. However, a pilot process is a must. And so often that's something that kind of gets left behind. People are in a hurry to deploy a new initiative and we just rolled it out. This is something where I definitely say, start it off with a group of teachers, let them try it out, see what interests teachers have, see what features uh, teachers are going on, so that you can have some of those answers ready ahead of time, so that you can have some of those capabilities set up so that it's most beneficial for uh, your teachers and frankly so that you're minimizing the glitches because certainly no one has heard anything about, let's say, a federal website that's having some bad press right now for being deployed before it was ready. You don't want to have that happening on your teacher websites as well. I found some challenges uh, initially with embedding HTML, again, as a function of user permissions. That posed a challenge uh, and took a while to overcome at times, as well as hiding menu options for some users perhaps based on permissions. Do you guys see a common theme going on here with some of these challenges? Permissions do tend to get murky, and that's where I find user role editor was really helpful. To be clear, no, I'm not a uh, shill for user role editor. I have no association with that. It's just been a really helpful plugin uh, for me. And that's something I'm gonna continue to fine tune moving forward. So going back and uh, taking a look here at what we had before, So we had these three remaining questions about what we need. And the big question that I had was, is it really flexible enough to do all of these different things? The theme that I was working with uh, in the demo sites was 2013. And again, this comes back to how I'm an educational technologist. I'm not a web developer. Because as soon as I told a bunch of uh, web developers here at the conference, oh yeah, I used 2013. They all went, really? Not 2012 or 2011? Those are much better students. I said, oh, OK. Um, but 2013 does have built into it uh, a lot of the options for custom post types that, uh, that can give you all the more flexibility to meet different teachers' needs. So I found through trying a bunch of different uh, features that I saw currently existing in teacher websites, I found that in fact WordPress does meet those needs. It does have that flexibility. From my experience, I think this is gonna be something that can be deployed by your in-house staff but notice that I put in the word mostly right here. I think if anyone walks away from this conference and says, great, we can do this ourselves in-house, all we have to pay for is hosting, whether we host it on our own server or we use a third-party site, we can do this 
and it costs us nothing. I think that's a short-sighted decision. I think for this to be a successful deployment, you really do have to allocate a certain amount of budget money to bring in professionals, whether that's setting up the themes, whether that's setting up user accounts, whether that's managed hosting. You do have to be prepared to make a certain fiscal commitment to supporting this, just like any initiative that a district would have. That leaves us with the one Final question, can this be used by novice teachers with a minimum of training? And so as I'm here presenting it to you, I'm also presenting this to my district, because it's my hope that my district is also going to uh, consider multi-site as a viable option for teacher websites. And I think that it's going to be a great fit, but as always, there are a bunch of people who have a lot of different approaches and a lot of different opinions as to what the right way for us to go is. So that's one that we're going to definitely have to wait and see, and I hope uh, come uh, WordCamp Boston 2014, I'll be able to tell you, hey, we've deployed it and everyone's on board. That's what I'm looking forward to, and my fingers are crossed on that one. So hopefully it'll be successful for us, and uh, if you're interested in trying it, hopefully it'll be successful for you as well. Uh, so I want to uh, thank everyone for uh, coming today, uh, and uh, open the floor to any questions that you may have. <coughs> Pardon me. <coughs> Uh, with the the uh, template copier or mm -hmm. the, the site uh, site copy, the site copy mm -hmm. uh, could that be used within multi-site to go from one uh, child site to another child site? Yep. Let me show it to you. Logged in right here. So if I go into actually right here, if I click on sites, you see this. I'm sorry, it's blog copier, not blog site copier. copier. Sorry about that. So if I click down here, I'm, so here's the listing of all of my different sites. If I click here on Blog Copier, Wi-Fi is a little slow today. I can pick any of the sites that I currently have installed, whether it's one of my template sites or another one. So yeah, if you're in a situation where you've got, let's say, a fourth grade teacher is a terrific website, they've been doing it for a couple of years, we're now fast forwarding to 2016, let's say, and you've got a new hire who says, oh my goodness, this is terrific and they have that agreement that you just want to copy the site and then they dump that user's blog posts and start from scratch, you absolutely can do that. The one challenge that I initially faced is that, let's just make a quick copy here now. Let's copy um, my TBS template. And we'll make a new one called C. Smith, let's say. The challenge that I found when I made that copy is that it did not get the full path correct. And as soon as I clicked on the site, it gave me an error message. And it's because there's an extra layer in the URL. It's not just advantage.com slash zsmith. It's advantage.com slash msdemo, because my domain is for a bunch of different sites, slash zsmith. And so if we go over here, I think I had a typo there before. You can go back and edit after. Exactly. I had to just go back, click on edit site, and fix the URL, and it worked perfectly. Okay. Uh, that was one extra step that I faced that you may not have to face. Now, were the teachers were they able to select a bunch of themes, or did you install that's them a, at the site level? That's a terrific place? question. Um, from conversations with my superintendent, it's been clear that the guiding principle for our district moving forward is we want to have those consistent design elements. So what I found was kind of that happy medium is everyone's got the same general kind of header you know, on the top of their page they're building. Some teachers may have a slightly different look, you know, whether it's a sidebar or no sidebar or a sidebar with different functions. But still, you can tell that it's part of the same universal uh, network of websites. But to me, it was non-negotiable. They're all going to be on the same theme. Along with that is the question of plugins. I was uh, talking to uh, somebody attending the conference, and she was asking me, how do I plan to handle plugins? Uh, if we do this deployment, I'll set up plugins initially that I think a lot of people are going to want. I'm open to adding them, but I'm going to be very judicious in what plugins I put in as, as super admin. Uh, or if it's not me, what, whoever is serving as super admin, what plugins they put in. Because obviously, the more plugins you have, you can't have you know, three different plugins for each of the websites on the network, it's going to be a hot mess. So you have to stay organized, and especially because Jetpack does so many of that right off the bat. Uh, a couple of questions. Sure. One is, how are you going to get approval for the, tent, for the, the web design, designs? And then you mentioned the 
tricky challenge of training. If this goes through, how are you going to address that, or is that still in the planning stages? That's a terrific question. Um, so I want to make sure I answer both parts. In terms of the approval of the uh, design, the, the first piece is this, I would not even picture saying, hey, this is a good design, let's run with it. I would picture this as, here's a proof of concept of how we can have these websites, and if we're going to move forward, we need to allocate those monies. Uh, we had a uh, presenter today, Michelle, who was speaking about the value of good design and how a lot of clients may say, hey, I want to buy 10 hours of design work just to get a couple loose ends tied up. That would be the direction that I'd push in. We have a district technology council, which has representatives from each building, as well as the director of technology, the IT staff, the superintendent, and they probably look at it, vet, and make that final decision. In terms of the training, yeah, that's the tricky one, isn't it? <laughs> For anyone in the schools, we know that, that there's never enough time to have the training that we need. Uh, and especially right now, for all the non-teachers, I apologize for the teacher talk for half a second here, but with the Common Core deployment, that's taking up the vast majority of professional development time. So fitting that in is gonna be a challenge. Uh, conveniently, I'm not the guy who would be setting the professional development schedule, so I'd just be the guy saying, I need the time, I need the time, and other people would obviously have to uh, make the time for that if this is gonna be a priority. Hi. Yeah, hi. Um, I want to talk about the flexibility in plugins. Sure. Again. Um, I just got done doing a project similar to this as well. Okay. And um, one of our core concerns the whole time was about security and support resources. Mm -hmm. With the way that multi-site is set up, one bad plugin can make a lot of problems. Yes, it can. And also making sure that we can continue to keep updating as soon as WordPress releases a new version. I'm curious, how many plugins are you using? Or what's the, what have you, how have you been approaching this? So, so at the moment, I believe the only plugins that I have installed are Jetpack, uh, BB Press. I have a contact form plugin that I'm planning on dumping uh, as soon as I have a few spare minutes, because I haven't been using it, and Jetpack has a similar function built into it. I'm, I'm going to be very picky about what plugins, as I said, from can let teachers put in. I was speaking with a representative from a managed hosting site today, and it seems like that's a really viable option for a lot of schools to really look into, because the managed hosting sites, especially ones that specialize in WordPress, will maintain all the archives for you and the backups uh, off-site as well as on-site for them. Uh, if, there's, if your site is compromised, they'll do the repair work to bring it in, and the expense for maybe a small business looking at that might say, my goodness, you know, $100 a month is a huge expense, but for a school district hosting, you know, an entire system of websites, $100 a month is negligible uh, for the security uh, that that would uh, have. The reality of the matter is school districts specialize in education. Uh, in the 21st century, we also do need to specialize in security, you know, when it comes to protecting student data, student privacy, new FERPA legislation, but the reality of the matter is, if there's an outside uh, contractor who has the expertise and the resources to do that better than us, it, if it's something that can be done, I think it's something that should be done. That's it for time. Yeah. At, oh, do we have time for one more? Yes. Okay, one more. Excuse me. This is actually quick, just two comments. Sure. One is that I definitely recommend a security plugin as one of your base core plugins. Absolutely. And the other one is I thought that it was interesting that you were worried about training for novice teachers because I think actually you might be worried about training for the older teachers. <laughs> to be <laughs> clear, novice teachers mean novice users of the technology. I okay. agree. Yeah, the newer teachers are probably going to be better suited. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. <laughs> I just read that and I was like, hmm. Absolutely. And that's it. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Thank you all for coming so much. I'll put my information back up here. Keep your fingers crossed for the socks this evening. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Thanks for reminding us. Yeah, right? Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, do they? Oh. Hi, how are you? Thank you so much. Oh, that's good to know. Thank you for your teachers. Where do you work at? Okay. But you travel, I'm sure. Yes, I'm seeing you're yeah, here. Yeah, absolutely. It's terrific. Well, thank you so much. No, you were right in the park. Doing all these things. You're not just a basic work of training. How do you... 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 How do
But then also, it's how do you know what you can do? Do you know the Johari window principle? So if you do training, that's a neat thing for you to know. The idea is you draw a 4x4 four four grid. Uh, I'm sorry, a 2x2 two two grid. It's things that I know that I know, things that I know that I don't know, things that I don't know that I know, and things that I don't know that I don't know. And that's the last one that is always the biggest grid. You know, on WordPress, there are things that I don't know that I don't know where. If I knew it, I'd say, oh my goodness, I need this. I need to use this. Yeah, yeah, perfect yeah, example is, you know, I'd be ashamed to know. To say how long it took you to uh, just do we need to make announcements and tell people to yeah, pick up their card? Uh, Come on. Uh, uh, yeah, you know, I, I didn't know we're going to do it. Exactly. Yeah. And that's the key to our article. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, thank great, you again. Great session. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. I don't know if it's I think I saw. We just rolled out a uh, WordPress multi site for the entire university over the summer. Um, <laughs> summer, like the bar, sometimes we have a monthly meetup with the people on campus. And the campus has enough to be super, super restricted on the site. Everybody, is, if once, once you get into this baby phase and people start hearing about it, everybody's going to have their. Uh, this was really at university at least. Everybody has their back plug in the unit. And it was a lot of people set up to go. The way we have it is like governance and a lot of like democratic committee stuff is to smooth over the fact that we have to say Right. Because you probably have like a whole week of saying the same thing. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm not sure if I, I don't think I'm going to make it tomorrow. There weren't as many things I was interested in, and it's a lot of